What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at three exercises for lumbar radiculopathy, which describes a situation where you have nerve pain that's radiating down your leg from your low back. So if you've got that going on, stay tuned for today's exercises. Lumbar radiculopathy can technically involve any of the lumbar nerve roots. So if we're looking at the low back, we have our L5, L4, L3, L2, and L1 vertebrae. In between each of those vertebrae is a nerve root that comes out. So you'll see these nerve roots here, L1, 2, 3, 4, and L5 down here. Those nerve roots contribute to the larger nerves that go down our legs, things like our sciatic nerve and our femoral nerve. When people have lumbar radiculopathy, in most cases it involves the lower lumbar spine, L4, L5, and S1. Symptoms from those nerves will tend to go into the buttock, the back of the leg, kind of the hamstring region. Sometimes it can wrap around to the knee. And if it gets more severe, it can go down past the knee into the calf, shin, and foot. So if your symptoms are anywhere in those regions, then again, the exercises in today's video can help reduce pain and sensitivity. Most people with lumbar radiculopathy will have what's called a spinal preference, and this relates to a position of the spine that helps to reduce their symptoms, and what we'll see is that either involves lumbar extension, arching the back, or lumbar flexion and rounding the back. So if you've got this going on right now, the first step is to figure out which of these helps you. So you've got that pain in your back, maybe it's going down your leg. The key is to try these two positions I'm gonna show, and if one of them makes your leg pain better, or makes it go up your leg towards your spine, which we call centralization, that's what you're looking for, and that's gonna become your exercise. So the first one here is lumbar flexion, rounding the back, so give this a try first, kind of a little test. What you're gonna do is lie on your back and pull both knees up to your chest. Now you're just gonna kinda of hang out here and hold this maybe for 30 to 60 seconds, and you're looking to see does your leg pain go away or get better? If it gets worse, then you can just come right out of this position and you have your answer right away. But you're just gonna hold this for a little bit and look to see if your spine prefers flexion or this rounded position. If you notice that your pain gets worse or doesn't change, then what I want you to do is go ahead and test extension. Now most people that I see, extension is the thing that helps them first. So for this one, you're going to lie on your stomach and you might just start here. Lying on my stomach is gonna cause my low back to arch. So again, I'm looking to see, do my leg symptoms get better while I'm hanging out here? If you don't notice much of a change, after maybe 30 seconds, you can try coming up to your elbows and create a little bit more extension. And again, just look to see, does my leg feel better in this position? The whole key right here again is to test flexion and test extension and figure out what direction is your spinal preference and then use that as an exercise. So say extension here helps me, then every day I'm gonna do this several times throughout the day and hold for anywhere from five seconds to 60 seconds depending on what helps you the most. If you do better with flexion, then just go back to that first one, but this is the first step. Figure out your spinal direction preference. The second exercise is gonna be a stretch for the muscles in our glute region, so our glutes, and then our deep hip rotators. Our sciatic nerve runs underneath those muscles, so even if your symptoms are due to something in the low back, I find in a lot of patients, if we get them to stretch their hip, it uh, helps to reduce those back symptoms. So imagine if the symptoms are on my right leg, what I'm gonna do here is lie back, I'm gonna straighten my left leg, and then the first variation is to grab my knee and pull it across to my opposite shoulder until I feel a good stretch right here in that glute region. So for these, I want you to perform two to four repetitions and hold for 15 to 30 seconds. You can hold longer if that feels better. This is the first variation. A lot of people like this one. We call it the knee to opposite shoulder stretch. The other one you can try is a figure four. And for that one, you'd bend the other knee, cross your leg like you're sitting, and then you're gonna reach down, grab the other knee, and pull everything up towards your chest. And again, look for a stretch right here. So just experiment with these two stretches, knee to opposite shoulder and this figure four stretch. Find the one that works best for you. I personally get a much better stretch in my glutes with this one. So. Just find the one that works best for you and stretch these muscles. It will help to 
reduce tension in the hip region where that sciatic nerve is located and that can help to reduce these radiculopathy type symptoms. For the last exercise, we are gonna mobilize the sciatic nerve and those branches from our lower lumbar spine. For this one, you will once again lie on your back, straighten your left leg. I'm gonna reach behind my knee with my hands. And so for this mobilization, what we're gonna do is alternate back and forth with putting tension on the sciatic nerve, which is running through this region, starting my low back and running down. What I'm gonna do is as I straighten my knee, that's going to put tension on the sciatic nerve. I'm going to point my foot and then I'm going to alternate. So when I bend my knee, I'm going to pull my ankle back. So I'm going back and forth from a straightened knee position with my toe pointed to my knee bent and my ankle pulled back into dorsiflexion. So I'm going to do this around 10 to 15 times to help mobilize that sciatic nerve and its branches. Doing this can help to reduce sensitivity and we have research showing that these mobilizations help to improve the circulation to our nerves. As this gets better and you feel less sensitive, you can bring your leg up like this and then you can try pumping your ankle back and forth. Just be careful with this one. When I pull my ankle into dorsiflexion, it puts a bunch of tension on my nervous system. So you may have to, you could even bring your leg down to a lower height and try it there. Just kind of experiment with it and see where you can perform the movement without flaring your nerve up. You just have to be careful with these because people can flare their nerve. They can make the nerve pain worse if they uh, you know, get into a position that's too aggressive right away. So give this one a try. This nerve mobilization you can perform a couple of times throughout the day to again help improve health of the nerve and reduce pain. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope you find the exercises to be helpful. In the low back chapter in my book you will find a nerve pain program that's more comprehensive. Like all the programs in my book it will guide you through three phases of rehab and have pictures of me doing all of the exercises. So this is again um, the nerve pain or radiculopathy program which is in the low back chapter. All the, each body region uh, has its own chapter in my book. So if you'd like to have a resource at home that allows you to do your own rehab, I will put an Amazon link for my book down in the description. All right, you guys, thanks for checking out today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.